Where do you start if you're just getting into AI automation and you're just beginning your AI automation agency? You need to start building automations you can sell right away. So I put together a little list here. This is the top industries paying for AI automation in 2025. We're going to go through this list. I'll talk a little bit about my experience in building some of these automations, but I'm also going to give you a bonus workflow tip on how to take one of these and actually turn it into a viable automation you can start building. Even if you're a absolute beginner in automation, watch my bonus tip, my bonus workflow on how I actually build out my automations or start to plan out how to build my automations. Let's dive into it. Right, so these businesses are looking for automated help. This is just based on data out there. What businesses are actually looking to automate? First one's gonna be coaching and consulting. There's just so many coaches out there looking for a little bit of extra help, right? I actually picked up a new client the other day. They are, it's a couple, a married couple. They do personal fitness one-on-one -on -one coaching for personal training and they just have trouble automating their day-to-day -day stuff emails and social media and that kind of stuff so a lot of coaches out there are looking for this kind of stuff this one's a little bit trickier recruitment staffing trying to get into this kind of stuff you'll have to really understand the niche and understand the market right but these kinds of things are just scattered and so spread out they have so many working pieces so many moving parts and so you can build in something to automate really easily. Digital marketing creative agencies, these businesses are looking for content creation, social media management, that kind of thing. If you want to develop your content management systems, I've built my own content management system in Airtable and N8N. It actually has working pieces still in make.com, this entire content management system that I can actually sell and duplicate to businesses that are looking to have some kind of custom CMS. This one's a little bit tricky too right now, B2B tech and high touch SaaS, right? There are SaaS companies out there that need automation. You'd think that these SaaS companies are just on top of everything. But for example, demo booking and CRM qualification workflows, lead routing, they also have little moving pieces that need to be automated. You can approach high touch SaaS companies and say, look, I've got this automation. This is what it does. This is how we can streamline your back end workflows. Financial service firms. I actually took on a new client who needs to automate, again, social media work. They need to automate their personalized outreach reach me personally taking on my own clients this one is a big one for me they're always looking for that sort of little extra push that little extra touch to get stuff working and flowing for their business same thing with legal services this one is a good one intake form processing scheduling e-signature flows how stuff is all working and moving to their clients that stuff can all be automated easily this one's a little tricky getting into e-commerce that's just a whole monster but you can approach these businesses this is a good one abandoned cart sequence and churn flows if you can automate really good product descriptions automate seo that kind of stuff is really big for e-commerce brands but you're probably seeing a trend here, you're seeing a theme with all this stuff. All these businesses aren't really looking for a do-all, end-all, be-all kind of solution. They're looking for these little back-end solutions, little problems that can be solved, little headache situations inside of their business that you can solve very easily with very simple automation. Education and online course creators. There is an abundance of community owners on the school platform that are looking for automated help, right? Auto enrollment, student progress, this kind of stuff can be tailored for school communities specifically. So online education in general, but specifically targeting school community owners and automating their process, automating their engagement, just getting stuff working for them on the back end. I, of course, run my own school community. If you want to check out my community, it's called Digital Automation Diagram. I teach automation and N8N, anything AI automation. I can help you build whatever you want. And we talk about a lot of interesting topics currently happening in the AI and automation space. I've got the link in the description if you want to check out my school community. 
community. Real estate is a big one. I've spoken with several real estate agents, brokers. These people are looking for anything lead, right? Generating leads, qualifying leads, nurturing leads, all of this stuff. And of course, if they have access to MLS, that is a huge factor in getting automations built out. Essentially, you can build real estate automations, right? That's really easy to just grab stuff from Zillow or grab stuff from somewhere and put something together. But if you work with a real Real estate agent who has access to MLS and can get that property data, you can build something very specific to that agent and then use that as a model to sell to other brokers and other agents. Look, this is this grabs from the MLS and this is what it does. So that's a huge selling point right there is being able to work with somebody using the MLS. Cool. Next one, healthcare clinics and private practices. Some of the healthcare professionals I've talked to, it's a really touchy subject here because we have to worry about privacy and all of that stuff that goes in with the healthcare niche. But simple things like appointment reminders, secure file routing, simple insurance verification workflows, those forms you have to fill out, all of that stuff can be automated. So just these little touch areas that can be streamlined and automated is really what these people are looking for. Event planners and experienced providers. This one is actually very easy to get involved with. A lot of these people, event planners and experienced providers, they're out there in the weeds working with the people. They're not really focusing on their back-end business stuff. Just to put it bluntly, they're out there with their people, right? And so they usually hire out back-end business management where they can have somebody to take care of all that stuff. You can be that person with building the automations that do the registration flows, speaker and vendor onboarding, all that can be very easily automated. And so it's a very easy sell to event planners and these type of experienced providers. Construction and home services, same kind of thing. These people are working. They're hard workers. They want to focus on their job. They want to focus on their business. And some of the back end stuff just takes so much time for them. They have to hire out extra help, extra management to do that side of things. And you can be that person to automate these very simple things scheduling, reminders, document tracking, very easy to do that stuff for them. Insurance agents and brokers, little tricky here with all of the policies and stuff you got to stick with. But again, working with these people and getting that back end stuff, claims routing, compliance checks, dashboards, that kind of stuff is very easy to build once you have access to someone internal in that side of things. Hospitality, this is a big one, especially for Airbnb owners. They want the check-in process to be automated. I actually own an Airbnb. I built a system that can message my guests and answer questions. A very simple system with a database of frequently asked questions. Then if that doesn't answer anybody's questions, it'll send a message to me, that kind of thing. So Airbnb owners are looking for that on a very private level. And so it's really easy to approach them and build that kind of stuff for them. Let's get into my bonus tip, how to actually start building one of these automations. You say, Kirk, this is great, but how do I do this? I teach step-by-step -step builds in the school community, but I also teach people how to teach themselves. I pride myself on teaching and I pride myself as being an excellent teacher and I teach people how to not need me anymore. That is terrible for my own job security, but my favorite thing is teaching. So what I'm gonna do, let's say we wanna build an automation for this coaching business, right? So I'm just going to highlight this from the list here. Copy this, come into chat GPT. I'm going to paste this in. I just put hyphens here to denote that this is what I'm pasting. And now what I'm about to type is part of my prompt. So I'm going to say, I need to build an automation for a coaching business. Can you help me create an automation build guide? Now, I think the automation I want to do is probably this one right here, automated onboarding scheduling. So I'll copy that and say, this is the one. Cool. Let's break this down. Chat is going to start building a step-by-step -step guide for you to follow to build out the automation. Now, Again, ChatGPT knows the tools that I'm using. So without even reading this, what we can add if you're just new to creating build guides for yourself is say, I'm using NADN and Airtable to automate. You could put in whatever tools you are actually using, but NADN and Airtable, definitely the way to go right now. These are the tools that are just blowing up and making the most moves. Also, make.com is massive. I still use make.com, but I'm favoring NADN 
currently. So I'm using N8N and Airtable to automate. Can you write this guide in the canvas? Now, ChatGPT has a feature called Canvas that actually will build out a live document. You can edit the document. I can type into this and make any manual changes that I need. Without even reading it, I'm gonna add a couple more prompts here. These are my two favorite magical prompts. Is this the best way to blank? Is this the best way to do something? So in this case, is this the best way to write this guide? Is there anything to add? It'll come up with our strengths that are currently in this guide and talk about some improvements here. Now you can see what kind of improvements need to be made, include diagrams or flowcharts. I don't want that example of email content. Error handling sounds good. And let's do number four, error handling and number seven, cool. Expand, I'll type in here, expand on number four and number seven in the canvas. Typos and all, I'll send that off. Cool, so now we should have a couple new sections here. We've got error handling and a little bit of expansion on these sections. So that looks good. That is a perfect guide that I can follow. If you are reading your guide and say, I don't actually know what I'm supposed to do, come down, let's add one more prompt. This really feels like a cheat code. For each step, explain each node I need to add in N8N. Tell me exactly what I need to enter. Go into detail about how all that connects in Airtable where necessary. Typos and all, I'll send that off. And we'll get some more detail, more definition on what we need to add into our workflow, right? So we have Airtable trigger node, Airtable trigger operation is to watch records, Airtable read node, get a record. For the send confirmation, the node type is an email, use the Gmail node. This is the actual JSON you can copy and paste in there. Here's an example of an email we can send. Very cool. Use a wait node. Step six, send the reminder, update, error handling, testing, and launch. Cool. So this is looking very good. Now I just want to give you one more bonus tip. Once you have your build guide fleshed out, you come up and copy that build guide. I'm gonna come into Google Docs and paste that entire build guide. Honestly, ChatGPT doesn't have a great exporter in my opinion. So what I do, I paste it into Google Docs and I export a PDF from Google Docs. So I'm gonna say download, download the document, export that PDF. Now I'll come back into ChatGPT and open a new chat, start a new chat, drop in that PDF file. Then you prompt this with, this is my build guide. Let's start at step one with N8N. Great. So here we go. Step one, no type, Airtable trigger. This is the operation we're doing. We're going to go step by step through this build guide in a new chat with ChatGPT. That is my process for creating automations. If I ever need help with anything, I create my own build guides, walk myself through it using ChatGPT and get building right away. So you can do that for any of these niches, any of these businesses, just start building stuff, testing it out, playing with it, seeing if it works and getting out there to start selling it. Hope you guys found this video useful. I look forward to seeing you in the group and I will see you in the next video.